Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I have my, it's called Deskscape. It is by Stardox. Stardox.com makes some pretty good desktop software. And so I'm not advertising for Stardox. I just use the software. I've actually paid for this one. And this is the background you see in my videos when you look at my screen. Let me give you a demonstration. Some of them are animated and some of them are regular desktops. So that's what you're seeing in the background. It's called Deskscape. Deskscape! Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I mentioned yesterday in the video that I talk about scripture in my video because that's to get rid of. And this stupid stuff right here, I don't care for it. Because I don't need that type of, my imagination is a very great imagination. And I don't need that in my head. I don't need that stupidity. That's this wonderful world we live in. That's the distractions of society, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the distractions of society. That's that junk they bombard us with. They put before us all the time so they can distract us. What I wanted to tell you all, I was having a conversation with a young lady this morning and she was explaining to me about what she's been going through. And she's a sap packer. And so I give, especially individuals like her, my time, okay? And she was talking about the fact that she was going through some difficult times. And I took the time to talk to her. Why? Because she needed somebody to talk to. You know, I, you know, see me, I talk to myself because I need someone to talk to. People always ask me why I do the things I do. That's guy, everybody. Um, ladies and gentlemen. In the midst of our conversation, um, she told me she was watching a particular video, and then the subject of the scriptures came up, and God, and she talked about how it was bringing out this point, and how it was showing people what the Bible said, and then expounding on it by explaining what the Bible said. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's what they've always done in scripture. Now, there are two things before I go on. I, I'm going to go ahead and prove that point because that's what I do. But there's two things I'm going to mention to you. What you guys don't seem to understand is that many people have gone to church and they've listened to some, and I'll say it because everybody else is afraid to say it. They've listened to some idiot tell them what the Bible is saying. Not showing them what the Bible is saying, just telling them or reading two or three scriptures and then creating a whole sermon off of two or three scriptures and letting that be it. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I've never been through that. Why would I want to listen to somebody talk for an hour? You, you hear me complaining about that all the time. There are people who do videos and that's all they do is talk and they may show you one or two things, but that's it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to highlight to you everything. I'm going to tell you, and pay attention to this so that you guys will get it. I am going to tell you some things that are going to be shocking to you. But that's okay. You know why it's okay? Because it's not my information. I didn't create this information. I didn't write this information. I did not develop this information. This is just the information. You take and do with it whatever you whatever you want to do. Yeah, my doggies, they came and they left and they're going to be coming back this afternoon. Apparently, this is their, their pit stop. And I don't mind that because I don't need them to be here every day anyway because then I'd be worried about them and afraid somebody's going to hurt them and all that stuff. I ain't got time for that. So my doggies left early this morning and for the last couple of days i've been noticing at night that my uh i have motion detecting lights that come on they're very bright 
And so I've been noticing at night that those lights have been being tripped. And then I've noticed that there were dogs outside. I didn't know it was this bunch. So they've been showing up every every single night. But last night, yesterday they showed up and they slept all day. But they did get a hearty meal. I fed them. Because her mother and her pup and her daddy, the daddy, mama, and the babies, okay, all of them showed up. Hey, it's a blue earth. I'm going to download the blue earth. That's what I'm doing in the background right now because, like I said, I want the backgrounds. I think this is going to be the last one. So that's going to be the last one. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this. And then we're going to minimize. And then I'm going to show you guys something. Now, what I want to do, because it's absolutely necessary, you know, this background, it looks okay, but I want an animated background. So I want an installed background. I want an animated one. I want one that moves. I haven't used this one before, so we we'll use the other one. This is dark. I didn't really want to do the dark background, but let's do it now. We're going to do it now. Got to do it now. Do it now. All right. Let's see if I could um, put this in a way the which many of you would understand. This is my hope that you will get it. Ladies and gentlemen, in our society, we have court cases. We have judges. We have attorneys. We have doctors. We have architects. We have all of these different industries where they have created languages to distract people, to confuse people, to send people on their merry little ignorant way. Now, why is that? Well, because you guys are adults. You'll believe anything. I, I'm not saying this. This is what they are saying. Okay, this is what they are saying. Look, you know what I did? I promised all of you, gave you my word that those who helped me, I would put out information to help them and to help everybody else. I said, because I would have the time to do that. And guess what I've done? I kept my word. As a matter of fact, the last couple of videos dealing with finances, especially let me let me go ahead and say it, especially the ones dealing with you and your ability to write off your debt. OK, especially those videos. To write off your debt, to write off your they owe you owe me some money, mother. OK, to write that stuff off. OK. The ability that you guys have of writing your debt off, the fact many of you are not doing it, it's amazing. But now you have the information. Now you can prove that you have the right to do that. Now, SEDM, okay, you guys know about the website, SEDM.com. SEDM has put out a lot of information on stuff like this. Okay, and they put out a great deal of information to help people. So let's get back and talk about the doctors and lawyers and everybody and how they do things. Ladies and gentlemen, they do that to confuse people. Not SEDM. SEDM has put out a lot of information on taxes. That's why I mentioned them. But getting back to the subject on all of these different industries and organizations, the courts created a new language along with Congress, it's called legalese. That was to make it so they could control you. But as we've shown you, their statutes are not law. Their statutes are just presumptive law. You have to rebut the presumption. How do you rebut the presumption? Excuse me, <laughs> that's not positive law. <laughs> even, if it's, even if you thought that it was prima facie evidence of positive law, it's not positive law. And I'm sorry, but that's not going to do. 
I need real law. I don't need that junk right there. So if you if you got a positive law, which is supported by the United States Constitution, which is the actual law of the land, it has not changed. Federal statutes and federal laws are not the law of the land. The United States Constitution is the supreme law of the land. It supersedes the state constitution. Why? Because all of the states have agreed to the federal constitution. All of the states. That's why their Bill of Rights equal the federal constitution's Bill of Rights. So we don't need your state Bill of Rights. We just need the Bill of Rights. So all you got to do is highlight the Bill of Rights. So you show me where I agree to all of this stupidity, and we'd be all right. Okay? We be all right. But until you can show me that, get out of my face. I need to see real law. I don't need to see presumptive law. I need to see real law. Just that simple. Presumptive law does not work. The real law does work. Ladies and gentlemen, many of you simply will never ever get it because you are not keen on understanding the difference between presumption and actual law. Well, here's the other thing. Ladies and gentlemen, they did this they did the Bible the same way they did the law. You have all of these different translations. As I showed you guys the other day, and those of you who have any sense, you'll pay attention. I just put in the name Jehovah. We're just going to do a search for the name Jehovah. Now, I'm going to do a search not in all the publications for Jehovah, because then that would be tens of thousands upon tens of thousands. No, we're not going to do a search of every publication for law. What we are going to do, and this is important, and I got to wait for it to catch up. So give me a, a minute. I've got to put you guys on pause because of the video overlay issue. It only takes a minute. Anyway, it only took a second. I just had to do that. Now, in all three of the Bibles that are here, you saw thousands, 20,000 plus times. In the Bible that I use, the name Jehovah occurs 9,000 times. Now, that's because it occurs in these forwards and all of that. But, however, the name Jehovah appears in Genesis 174 times. The book of Exodus, 407 times. Now, this is from the original translation. Not from a modern translation, but from the original translation where the thing known as the tetagrammaton. If you don't know what a tetagrammaton is, I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, tetagrammaton means the four consonants. J-H-W-H-Y-H-V-H. Okay? That was the consonants that, because in the original language, they didn't use vowels. The reader knew where to put the vowels when reading. So, there you have consonants. Well, these were the four consonants, and when they were put together, formulated the word Jehovah, or in Hebrew, Yahweh. Just that simple. So, what did they do? It started with the Jews, ladies and gentlemen. They created this thing called the oral law. <laughs> if only you guys knew how stupid the Jews were. I mean, the Bible talks about how stupid they were all the time. They continually had to be disciplined because they kept doing stupid things. Well, one of the stupid things the Jews did was they created this thing known as the oral law. Just created it. Just like Congress creates statutes. Well, the so-called scribes created an oral law. And Basically, if the law said, hey, you shall not kill, well, what they said, they went a little bit further than you shall not kill. They made it even against law, just for, I'm just using this as an example, not saying this is an actuality, just using an example. 
that you can't even think about killing somebody because that would be against the law and you could be punished for that. You know how they're talking about they're going to be coming up with what they call or refer to as the thought police? Well, that's what I'm suggesting, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that exact same thing, that there is an issue of a thought police. That there is an issue of a, we are going to add so much to it that it's going to be so confusing that nobody's going to understand it. And that's what they did to scripture. So, I'm sorry, I'm a little distracted because uh, I had a gentleman call me today. He has a reverse mortgage and he wanted a consult on how to save a home because his grandmother died yesterday. And he called me today because they're getting ready to go through funeral arrangements and everything, and they wanted to make sure that nobody took advantage and they wanted to jump on top. So we're going to have a consult, but like with the last gentleman who called me about his mortgage, we spoke for about 40 minutes this morning, and we'll have the actual consult a week from next week sometime, but we'll be speaking again on Wednesday. You see, people, the hour and 45 minutes is guaranteed. But the people who I converse with, they get a whole lot more than that. Because I follow up with people. I don't just have one conversation. That's not promised to all of you. The hour and 45 minutes is guaranteed. All the other conversations subsequent to that is courtesy. Now, that's why people are getting the consult. That's why they pay, because they're paying me for my time, which is a donation to the foundation, not to me. It goes to the foundation. Why? Because the foundation is the thing that's helping to keep certain things operable for now. All right? The foundation is what's paying for this place here. All right. Let's get back to this. I told the young lady that I would be doing a video explaining to you all about the law and the Bible and how they go hand in hand. I've been trying to say that to you. That's why you keep seeing me showing you scripture and case law. Why? Because they did the same thing with the scriptures that they're now doing with the law. They've added so much junk. Remember, positive law means only the title. Does not mean the actual code. The code is not positive law. Many of you have been charged with a code, especially if you're on the federal level, you were charged with a code. The code is not law, and you never rebutted that presumption. Well, the Bible is not based on presumption, but the Words that people say, well, no, it means this and it means that. When people try to tell you what the Bible means, that junk is based on presumption. That's junk, okay? Nobody can tell you what the Bible means. They don't have that authority. People can't tell you what it means. The Bible tells you what it means. He ain't never gave nobody authority to say what his word means. Okay? So what they did was they came up with all this extra junk, hellfire. Go ahead, look at the Bible. There's no hellfire. Okay, go, go ahead. Go take a look. There's no hellfire. Immortality of the soul. Go ahead. Show me one scripture that talks about the immortality of the soul. Wait, hold on. Hold on. We, we're all sinners. So I typed in the soul that is sinning and itself will die. I didn't have to type that in because I can go directly to the scripture. That's Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, 18th chapter, verse 4 and 20. Let's see if I'm correct. Got to put y'all on pause again. It is the overlay that's the issue. One sec. Okay. 
Now, the reason why Ezekiel and this is the 18th chapter, we're going to go to verse 4. Look, all the souls, Naphish, see, I said Naphish, I'm sorry, it's Psyche. Psyche is the Greek. Nate is the Hebrew. Okay? All the souls, to me, they belong. As the soul of the Father, so likewise the soul of the Son, to me, they belong. The soul that is sitting, we're all sinners, it itself will die. Sin just means to miss the mark. Just means not perfect. That, that's all sin is. Not being perfect. See? Nay fish. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, when the Bible uses the term soul in such a fashion, it's not talking about an internal soul. It's talking about the human body. It's talking about the person themselves. It never was meant to mean that we have a soul living inside of us. And by the way, soul and spirit don't mean the same thing. Okay, soul and spirit do not mean the same thing. Spirit denotes breath or wind. Soul does not. Scripture say that Adam became, Genesis 2, 7, a living soul. So the Bible has always referenced the person as being the soul. So there is no such thing as immortality of the soul in Scripture. Go right ahead. I know, I know, I know. Paul spoke about souls and going and being with the Lord. Go right ahead. Go and try to use that. And you'll see that it has nothing to do with this here. Not even with the context or the subject matter. Go on now. So what they did with the law is the same exact thing. You see, people didn't understand what it meant originally. So when they translated. And that's all the law is. It's a translation. Every code is a translation. Congress is saying that it is translating what was originally intended by the Constitution. Okay, which we all know is bull crap. Yeah, I said crap. It is bull crap. What they're doing, they're doing intentionally. That's designed to mislead people. And so many people have been misled. Just like the scriptures. So many people have been misled. So, the Bible and the law are treated the same. You have thousands of translations. Um, let's do this right here. And then I'm hoping, I won't go past 30 minutes. Uh, I need the, I should have said approximate number of Bible translations because I wanted to pull up the approximate number of Bible translations. See, the first thing people want to chime out of their mouths out of ignorance is that Jehovah's Witnesses wrote their own Bible. They say that. They have no proof that Jehovah's Witnesses wrote their own Bible. No, they just say it because they heard it from someone else. Okay. The full Bible has been translated into 704 languages. The New Testament has been translated into 1,551 languages. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's not true. That, that's, that's not true. That's from Wikipedia, and so we can't go by that. That's not true. Let me. I hit the wrong thing, and I don't know what I hit, but I hit something, and it was the wrong something to be hitting. Shopping. I'm not shopping for no Bible. Matter of fact, honestly, I would never pay for a Bible. Well, technically, I have paid for some Bibles because they were parallel, but the Bible shouldn't, you should never have to pay an arm and a leg for a Bible. $60, $80 for a Bible, please. Okay, you see that right there? At least some portion of the Bible have been translated into 3,400 languages. 
There are over 10,000 languages on this planet. Many of those other languages, most of the people speak dual languages. See, now, this is Wikipedia again. There are 1,700 versions of over 1,200 languages available digitally on Bible.com. Really? 1,700 languages on Bible.com? I didn't know that. Okay? I did not know that. Um, now, this right here, Wyclef, 717 different languages. 5.5 billion people access. Okay. That's the Biblica, Hispanic, Biblica, or well, Latin, let's get that correct. Uh, 7,106 living languages in the world. That's not true. 10,000. There, and that includes dialects and all of that stuff. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to say is because there are so many different translations, many of them did like the King James Version. Now, many of you hold on to the King James Version because it claims it's the Holy Bible. What made it holy? Because they put the word Holy Bible on there? Go ahead. Go ahead and answer the question. What makes it holy? Because they put the word Holy Bible? Hold on. We're going to go past 30 minutes. Sorry. K-I-N-G-J-A-M-E-S. 600. E-R-R-O-R-S. I said 600 errors. Now, there are over 600 errors. Look at that. Errors in the King James Version. I don't care about that. That's a video. That ain't, <laughs> that ain't going to do. Okay? That ain't going to do. Uh, what are the examples of translation errors in the King James Version that all believers believe? Now, this is Quora.com. I'm going to pull that up. Uh, I'm looking. King James was written in 1611. So. That right there is not an indicator of it. I'm looking for the actual errors because they've documented it when they went back and complete and refuted the biblical answer to the corrections and alterations of the King James Version. Oh, in order for you to get that, <laughs> it's $18. Okay. This is not, we're not talking about printing errors. We're talking about the actual intentional mistranslation of the King James Version. Over 600. International law says that you can alter 500 verses. Why? Oh, look at that. The VaticanCatholic.com said that there are no errors in the King James Version, which lets you know that they were intentional. Okay, I didn't say that. They just said that there are no errors. So, watch this. Give me one second. I have to type it in, but now I have to focus. Okay, this right here, this is Google Books. Today's King James Version and the 1611 compared and more Google Books results. Do other cite or quote? this 421 count as though it was complete, accurate, and factual listing of all the changes made to the 611, 1611 edition. Ladies and gentlemen, that is just one. Now we're going to show you the leading one, the one at the very top, because this down here is not going to give me what I need. What you all must understand is no one authorized King James to do the Bible. There had already been several translations prior to that. Okay, several translations. You do have William Tyndale, who produced the Living Bible prior to that, was killed for doing so. By the king! Okay, sorry. Um, pay attention. The King James Version of 1611. 
the myth of early revision. That means that there are probably about 600 alterations in the book of Ecclesiastes alone. So this is from authorized version 1611.com, av1611.com. Now, this is .com website. This website is going to be partial to this. They call it a myth. It is not a myth. We can show you the different translations in the King James Version. There is a publication. It's called BibleDiscovery.com, where it gives you many different translations. Sorry, this is the new Windows 11 start button. I haven't used it a lot, a lot, a lot, but I've used it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to all apps, all apps. And then we're going to go to Bible discovery. There it is right there. I haven't used it, so I will have to update it. Yeah, we'll do Bible discovery 64 bit. Come on, now. get on out there. And we don't, I, we're not really concerned about the revision. Okay. Ah, uh, oh, by the way, the reason why you have so many staunchers, like this one says, when modern critics wish to change, God was manifested in the flesh. Because that's not what the original translation said. The word was manifested in the flesh. Is what it originally said. Okay. Then it says, or change only begotten son to only begotten God. Well, gee, this is the only begotten son of God. And God did not appear in the body because no man can see God. Sorry, it's just not possible. They want to point the King James Version as saying, they did it too. Don't know what that, that means. That don't make no sense. Ladies and gentlemen, what I am trying to tell you is the people who speak about the King James Version, they only had four manuscripts. Four. Not 18, not 100. Four manuscripts to go by. Not because there weren't more, but because that's what they chose to go by at that time. Which is why after 1611, you have the Dead Sea Scrolls where they found hundreds since 1952, hundreds of manuscripts to more accurately translate the scriptures. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I do have to take this. Y'all will have to excuse me one moment. Ladies and gentlemen, it says there are, of course, a number of accepted errors in the King James translation. Who accepted them? Now, this thing right here, I, I don't agree with that Mormon delusion. Okay, but there are, of course, a number of accepted errors in the King James Version. Accepted. Who accepted them? Ladies and gentlemen, Bible translation is a very serious matter. You don't just put errors. The fact that they... All right, God. I um, It is letting me know that that won't work. I'll have to open up the other one. The fact that they changed one thing after being warned that whosoever alters or changes, okay, so you can't do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible that is used by Jehovah's Witnesses only put God's name back in the scriptures where it belongs. There is no reference to the Trinity in the original translation, and you won't see none referenced in the Bible used by Jehovah's Witnesses. Why? I don't care if you believe in the Trinity. If the Trinity was a fact, it wouldn't need you to support it. It would be fact. That's why God, and whether or not he exists, he doesn't need you to defend his existence. His existence is proved all around us by nature. Evolution, that's just a theory because that's what man operates on. Their so-called statutory laws are based on theories or presumptions. That's what a theory is. 
They just call it a theory, but it's a presumption. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is not based on presumption. The Bible supports itself. That's the problem with the law. It doesn't support itself. You find too many contradictions in the law. But because of the different Bible translations, you also find contradictions in those translations that they don't agree, which lets you know where the errors are. So there is this thing called, like I'm showing you right here on my screen, this is Bible discovery. Now, no, this is not a Jehovah's Witness organization or group or anything. Matter of fact, I doubt if you will even see Jehovah's Witnesses directing you to Bible discovery, but I am doing it. No, I'm not a representative of Jehovah's Witnesses. I am a Jehovah's Witness. I am not a representative of the organization. So what I am doing right here is I'm showing you, go download Bible-discovery.com. Download Bible Discovery. It's a free software. And do your own research. Pull up the Hebrew translation. Pull up the Greek translation. And parallel it. Do the parallel version. And compare what's being said to what's in the different translation. And then compare the different translations and see where they've altered things. See where the translators took and chose to translate it a certain way. King James left God's name in the King James Version four times. Left Two references, Jehovah Nessie, Jehovah Jireh, in the King James, for a total of six times, the name Jehovah appears in the King James Version. Name or title, sorry, because one, the, the other two are titles. Hold on now. God's name appeared in the original translation over 7,000 times. The original translation over 7,000 times. Let me pause y'all so that this can pop up. Now, as you can see, I've never started it before. So when you first get it, this will pop up. Give you recommend it. Okay. Hebrew, Greek, dictionary of the Septuagint words. Why? Because when these, the individuals translated the Greek Septuagint, that was in Greek. Well, the Bible, only the Christian Greek scriptures, the time that talks about Jesus, his life, ministry, the apostles, the things that were written by the so-called Christians, I say so-called only because of individuals calling themselves Christians today and blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, here is a research, research source. Now, see, I don't like this. King James 1769 with Strong's numbers and morphology. Hold on, what, what, what's Strong got to do with this? Well, Strong is an encyclopedia, but it's an encyclopedia that tends to skew along the lines of the King James Version and the pagan beliefs that were added to it. What, you didn't know? Hellfire? Immortality of the soul? Trinity? Are all pagan doctrines? Then you need to do your research. Not because I said it was a pagan doctrine. No, because they say it. Because they document that from the beginning. The shareware, not so much. See, I'm on Bibles. And because they are shareware, I believe what happens is they're not freeware. You know what I'm saying, Vern? So this is the NASB, the New American Standard Version. And this one has strong numbers. So I click on it. Wait, hold on. Let's make sure you download it. All right, do what you're supposed to do now. Don't get on my nerves. All right, and then I'll go ahead and do all the other ones after this. I'm just showing you that this is available to you all for free. You don't have to take my word for anything. Do your research. Now, so that you understand, because that's the problem with a lot of people. See, that's where it means by shareware. And I don't feel like paying for their junk. 
And yes, they're junk. Because how can you translate? Well, they need to get paid for uh, sitting up there. Eh, 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 whatever. Not going to pay for somebody else's stuff. That they plagiarize. The same as I was talking yesterday about how they claim that they can sit up there and infringe upon God's copyright, nature, by taking control and saying they could patent it. Again, the Supreme Court has already documented that you cannot patent nature. Nature is already patented. Okay? Because you cannot patent nature, that creates a problem for all mankind. Because all of the patents are based on nature. See, the Supreme Court, what they did is they created a percentage algorithm. Percentage algorithm? Yeah, where they say you can only do so many percents of this and so many percents of that. And because you can only do so many percents of this and so many percents of that, ooh, doggy, that's where you run into trouble. Because when you do any more than that, you messed up. That's what they do. You know what? I didn't know. I thought Darby was written around the time of the King James, and it turns that it wasn't. And I like the Darby Bible. It is a Bible that the Catholics used to use a long time ago. And I, I do I do like the Darby Bible. Okay? And so, all right, ladies and gentlemen, when I tell you all that I am a researcher, that's what I do. But I don't research the law. When I was 15, I made it a point to go ahead and prove that what I believed and what I knew was worth believing and knowing. A lot of other people won't do that. They won't go and prove what they believe and what they know. They've added some other Bibles to this, which is okay. So, yeah, they, they've added some other Bible. I knew about the Geneva Bible. Uh, I've known about that for a couple of years. And so I, ladies and gentlemen, I am only downloading these for research purposes. I'm not downloading them because these are going to be where I'm going to be going. I'm going to stick to where my research has already been finalized. And that's that's going to be the most part. Again, this video was only being designed to show you of how the law and the Bible are the same way. They created all of these statutes. They added all of this junk to the actual law so as to keep, keep people confused. The young lady was explaining to me that how she realized what the law really is and that all these statutes are not law. And she realized that for the first time by listening to my videos. I've been yelling, screaming, and hollering this stuff for years. You guys keep hearing me say statutes are not law. K.C. Davis actually said the same thing. Now I understand what K.C. Davis, where he was coming from when he said statutes are not law. When K.C. Davis was saying statutes are not law, K.C. Davis was saying that with reference to the fact that these idiots, yes, and I call them idiots because that's what they are, were trying to claim something was common law when it was not. Okay? That's the problem. This is the Holy Scriptures, the so-called Old Testament, and this is by the Jewish Publication Society. And so I do that because what happens, and I will download the Hebrew uh, version of the Bible so that I can do a comparison. So I will download the Hebrew version of the Bible so I can do a comparison with the Hebrew language and the English language and the translation of other Bibles so as to make sure that they did what they were supposed to do. Because, again, a lot of people translate just to be translating, saying, and then you trust the translation because you don't do your research. Why do you put so much faith in the King James Version? Because somebody told you to. Because your grandmama did it, your grandfather did it, your grandbrother did it, your granduncle did it. Everybody's doing it. And so, because everybody's doing it, you got to do it too, right? 
And that's the problem with our world. Ladies and gentlemen, if you believe in scripture, these are the last days. If these are the last days, then you don't have time to be making any mistakes. Okay, sorry. It's just that simple. Look, I got to go because there's a lot of things that I have to take care of, and that's me stretching because I've been in front of the computer for the last five hours, and I got to get some work done. I've been on the phone talking to people, helping people. I got to get some work done. This is my life, people. I've dedicated my life to helping people. That includes you all. Sue me for being stupid. All right. I'm going to go and take care of my business. I hope you guys get the understanding and the, the theme of this video showing you how both the law and the Bible and the way they've done with the law by adding and expounding on the law and creating all these sub laws. Do you not understand federal law? That there are several federal laws for the same crime? Excuse me? What the? Several federal laws for the same crime? Why? Well, it's because the person may do this but not do that. And so it's because of the language. Really? That's interesting. So is that why they have so many different Bibles? Oh, yeah, we got so many different Bibles because there's so many different religions. And so because we got a Bible to fit everybody in their culture, just like we got a Bible for gay people. You got a Bible for gay people? Yeah, it tells them that being gay is approved by God and he loves them. And he loves them no matter what. Wait a minute, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. they just play on the fact that God loves all of his creation. It's just the acts that the people do he doesn't love. So they don't bring up that. They just say he loves them. And so they're not really lying. They're telling the truth. But, you know, they're just being technical with it. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, it is true that the book of Corinthians says that that is what some of you were. But you've been washed clean. But you've been sanctified. You've been declared righteous. Individuals who used to practice homosexuality. But that's those who used to practice, not those who are currently practicing. If an individual practiced that in the past and they made efforts to change, of course there's forgiveness. But if an individual wantonly violates God's law, remember, Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 26, says that if anybody practices sin willfully, there's no longer any sacrifice for sins left. It means Christ's sacrifice has no bearing on the person. Go and read it. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 26. Don't make me have to, look, all right, fine. I'm going to do it. But then that's it. That's the last one. So we can go all publications. We can go Biblia. Then we're going to go study. Then we're going to go Hebrews. One more. Hebrews, where you at, he? And then we're going to go here. Then we're going to go here. Then we're going to go 26 so that you all can see. And then I'm going to get off this video. Or if we practice sin willfully after having received the accurate knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice for sins left, but there is a fearful expectation of judgment and a burning indignation, not a burning fire, not a burning hell, that is going to consume those in opposition. Indignation, it's not a literal burning. It's a figurative burning. Okay? But anyone who practices sin willfully, they don't have a hope. That's what this is saying. So, individuals, we have our frailties. We have our faults, like San Andreas. But if we practice, something becomes a practice when it's repeated over and over and over again. Practice makes perfect. And some, some people are out there trying to be perfect at sinning. Okay, they don't have a hope for the future. He's already said that they will be cut off. That's all that means. So when you understand that in our society, 
the people who run the society, who run the laws, who run the industries, the doctors and the lawyers and the judges and the congressmen and the electricians, and they create all these new languages so that only they understand, please understand that they've done the same thing with the Bible. Before, did you know that they would not allow the Bible to be read in church? In some churches, they still practice reading it only in a foreign language. Why do you think they read it in a foreign language? Did you think that they were, well, we're sticking to the original translation? No. So that the audience couldn't understand what was being said. To this day, you have some churches that read the Bible in Latin only when their audience doesn't speak Latin. What the flying fart? So yes, that's what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. The same thing with the courts. You guys are now finally understanding that. Wait a minute, hold on. That ain't law? But you guys told me that this was against this law. That's not a law? What the? Then how you got me up in here if that ain't no law? This is what they're doing to people, ladies and gentlemen, every single day. Same thing with the Bible. Uh, Cool and the Gang sang a song, and it was called Misled. I've always liked Misled, but every time I hear that song, I'm thinking about what the nations have done to people, respecting the law, respecting the Bible. The very same people who have designed these Bibles to mislead people, and King James was one of them, go ahead and tell me King James was not a Freemason. Uh-uh, don't y'all dare, because you know I'm going to put it in here. And I guarantee you, all of the scholars he used to translate the Bible were Freemasons. Hold on. A S O N. Uh oh. N. Come on, Google, you ain't got nothing to say. Normally, Google gives suggestions. I should have put a question mark. I apologize. Conspiracy over who edited the King James Bible? Really? There's no conspiracy. He had all of them beheaded. Okay. Uh, Sir Francis Bacon, he was not the only one, was the editor of the King James Version of the Bible, and he was a mace, Freemason who left Masonic marks in the first edition. Don't care if he left Masonic marks. Ladies and gentlemen, King James, pay attention. His was not the authorized edition of the Bible. There was no God saying, King James, translate my Bible. Okay, that never happened. Okay, that never happened. Now, I didn't write this. This is at some Brill.com talking about being a Mason king. Okay. I did not ever look up whether or not King James was a Freemason. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Because of how the world is ran, I knew he was a Mason. Never read it, never had to read it. That's why I could type it in now. Okay? Was a Freemason. Okay, I'm. I, but these are those dot com sites because you're not going to get it anyplace else. Masonic Bible, the King James Version. So those of you who King James is the Holy Bible, ladies and gentlemen, the Freemasons, please go and find who they serve. Now I'm not agreeing with this right here, but go and find who the Masons serve. Who is their God? Okay? Go and discover who is the God of the Masons. That's who authorized that Bible to be done. That was authorized by the Masons. That's why it's called the Authorized King James Version. Don't take my word for it. Go and look it up. See, they want to say conspiracy because there's so many people who are staunch followers and believers and I am an idolatrous person. I idolize the King James Version. I won't read anything else. We don't speak that language anymore. That's old English. The words have changed and many of the meanings of the words are not equal to the meanings of the same words today. 
the words and their meanings have changed. That's why if you're going to translate the Bible, you don't do it from a translation. You do it from the original. King James did it from four manuscripts. And most of the other Bibles after that did it from the King James Version. They didn't go to the original. They translated from the King James Version, trying to expound upon that. It is your fault if you are misled by the statutory laws. It is your fault if you are misled by the different translations. I keep telling people, do your own research. Don't take my word for anything. I'm just giving you a guide post. Follow. Follow your heart. You're right. Ladies and gentlemen, follow the pattern, the guide, the markings, and let's see where you'll end up. Hey, I got to go. I'm not going to be doing another video until about Thursday of this week. Too much to do this week, so this is just me letting you know. This is the 11th, so it'll be about the 15th. Thursday, I have an appointment, so it'll be the 15th that I'll probably do another video. Take care, everyone.